that's not gonna work. Doesn't quite fit. Oh, that'll work, I guess, but it's gonna, it's gonna tip a little bit. Hmm, maybe Alyssa has a plan. Man, it's so nice having all these jars on hand. I you know, knew if we just bought a ton of them, yeah. they wouldn't go to waste, but I hate nothing more than getting started on a canning project and running out of jars or yep. not knowing if you have enough. You know, we look a little crazy going out of the store with two shopping carts full of jars. People are like, what are you gonna feed, an army? The smart people are like, they're uh, smart. Yep. And it's a little in the way most of the time and you're always going through jars, but boy oh boy when you start a project. Less trips Glad to the store. Yep, more canning. So today we're canning a boatload of soup. Like more soup than you know what to do with. And most importantly, we're pressure canning it, right? Right. This is new for us. We're not pressure right. canning experts. Well, we've only we've pressure canned a couple of times, broth, mm -hmm. but that's it. So naturally it's not something that we gravitate towards because yep. we don't do it in our sleep yet like we do water bath canning. We've been playing with this idea for a while now that we're trying to stop cooking meals for tonight. We're trying to work more and more towards creating all this food in bulk. We've done really, really well with canning things like jam and applesauce, but jam and applesauce aren't meals for most people. <laughs> wait, so we've wait, been wait. trying to figure out how we can can things like say soup because soup is extremely healthy and it's quite the fast food only we don't want to be getting soup from the grocery store because we really value home cooked meals and we're trying to start the biggest bestest most amazing garden we've ever had ever this year and we'll have lots of food <laughs> and i think it's good to have some raw ingredients prepared and mm -hmm. canned that way if you want to build something out of it you can but we've also learned that the more kind of components you have canned, the less likely you are to start cooking with them because they're not a complete food. Right. And so here in America, <laughs> we're big fans of grabbing something off the shelf, heating it up and eating it. And not all the time. Mm, I'd no. say that's not our goal. Our goal is to cook every night, but we, we have such a fast paced life that we do want things like chili and soup ready to grab off the shelf. Our chili and our soup. Right. Because we have plenty of other canned chili and soup and it doesn't yep. make you feel the best, nor do we want to feel forced to go out to eat when we're not ready to cook and we have we're just about to head into the build season yep. life's about to get really busy so that's why we just we want to try this out we don't know how it's gonna go so what I've done is I've picked three soup recipes from the canning Bible so we're gonna try canning chicken soup chili and split peas you know what I love about Alyssa she's like I go, All right. or go home yeah we're, we're not you know what guys, Let, let's just see if we could can a couple pints of chicken noodles. We're gonna can three different types of soup in mass quantities with the biggest canner all American sells and we're gonna be to a dinner date by four. Go! Not only that, one reason I haven't done this project yet, I've been reluctant to like make a bunch of soup, is that we want our own broth. I feel like it's one way to really get in those extra nutrients that are missing in our diets. What we did last night, or yesterday, is we cooked up the chicken and we made broth out of it. So we're gonna use this in our chicken soup recipe, mm, maybe yummy. our split pea recipe, whatever uses broth. Yep. And then we also have local chicken here too. So I'd say, this soup is a little bit of a two-step process. Uh -huh. We've kind of been playing with the idea of canning a bunch of broth, but because we've been living in an RV prior till recently, it hasn't really made a lot of sense because it's a multi-day process. And it's been working really well to make our broth in a stock pot with chicken feet. So we get four pints at a time, which works really well. It lasts us probably for a couple of weeks. Is the chicken here in the broth here, is this the chicken that we got from the neighbor when we plowed out their driveway recently. Oh, we have secret, secret goods. Ugh. Look what ended up in our backhoe bucket. Sausage. Yeah, do you want to take some? What super, where's the car? Where is the car? Sure is. Guys, see how this works? So plowing driveway equals chicken soup. 
Got it? So the hypothesis we're testing, I have no idea how this is gonna go, but we wanna do this more frequently. So we wanna see, is it extremely time consuming? Is it easy? Does it make sense? Does it make good food? And do we eat the food? So in theory, this should give us about 19 to 20 pints of soup. Mm. That should last a while. One of the first few canning projects Alyssa ever tried was jams and fruits because we were able to forage. So when we first got the property, we really didn't have any food production of our own, right? So we went, went ended up foraging and getting food and fruit from elsewhere. And unfortunately, uh, vegetables don't grow very well in the wild, but fruit on the other hand does. So most of our canning has been fruits. But let's just say you can't really sit down at dinner and give everybody a pint of jam. So first we need to get the soup cooking okay. and then we can get the canning set up ready so that when the soup's done, into the canner we go. Our secret weapon. Three cups of carrots. So why did you give me? Cause I didn't know how many we needed. 5,000 pounds. <laughs> Wait, does chili have two L's? I don't know. Does it? Perfect. Shambo, who has to do the onion? Best one out of one. Okay, ready? Yes, oh! I totally knew you were gonna pick paper. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> What's well, so makes a comeback? I haven't won that game in a long time. One, two, three. Oh. Yeah, woo! Here, All I'll right. make it easier because I love you. All right, I'm going in. Do you want the onion goggles or are you a man? Really, you're good? I'm good. I can't cut without these. No, yeah, it's kills You're already Alyssa. using a, like a little chopper, so yeah, I'd I'm keep your man card. I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. Like, don't tell them about the chopper because that makes me look a little bit more yep. than I really am. So, I got it. All I got right. It. You're regretting the king goggles. I am. Wow. Well, you only have like one left. God. Yep. Ah. I can't do it. <laughs> and a little extra for good measure. Oof. You cup onions the way I like my ice cream scoops. I'll have one scoop. And like, by one scoop, I mean like a big right. scoop. Oof, been a while. I know. You know this is your wheelhouse. Gotta get my canning shoes back on. It's not 104 out here. Are you kind of lost? I'm feeling it. This Are you? Ooh. Do you like split pea soup? You know, I'm not really sure. I feel like it's something that I enjoy and mm -hmm. when it's available, I get it. Uh -huh. It's really good with a slice of buttery bread, but it's never something, you know, I, I don't know that, that I've ever made split pea soup. I could see that. I think we'll have our kind of our go-tos. This recipe calls for water and I decide to use broth because why not? Way to be rebellious. So this is ready for onion. 
nice. In my head, this was all planned out. Yep. I didn't read apparently close enough, but everything was oh. going to be cooking for about 30 minutes. Uh -huh. And it's all ready to can at the same time. And now <laughs> I'm seeing that the split pea soup is going to take a lot longer. So, ah. Alyssa likes to can the way I wax cars. On the back of the bottle, it says work in small sections. So I just do the hood, the doors, the trunk, the top. I'm like, it's not ready to wipe off yet. So I just keep it's going. Not and I'm a like, car. And then you're like, ah, oh, it's so hard, I can't get it off of there. So all that chicken, not only are we getting some nice chicken soup out of it, but we also have about six cups left over for the freezer. Here's all of our pre-proportioned bags of chicken feet that are ready to go. We just toss one of these babies in the crock pot, fill her up, we don't even add any flavoring or veggies or anything, and it makes pretty dang good broth. Next year, hopefully, these canned tomatoes will be out of the garden. Yeah. It's one reason why we're growing a lot more tomatoes. Mm -hmm. It's because we didn't have enough to can them last year. Not diced like this. No. We go through a lot of diced tomatoes. Seems a shame to keep buying them. I guarantee you our tomatoes are better. I hope so. How could they not be? If nothing else, they're made with love. So now what? We wait? We wait. We could warm the jars, but there's a lot of simmering and cooking. Yeah, I mean, we could probably wait an hour to warm the jars. True, yeah, because we've got 40 minutes plus. Yeah, so the, the split peas, we need to let cook, and then once they're all cooked through, take the immersion blender, oh. and then we add all of our veggies and our diced ham. And then simmer we for half an hour. Ham, and then simmer. So then, then we'll start kind of getting the canner ready to go. Gotcha. All day project, guys. It all is turning into that, but that's why we're testing this out, right? Well, if we do big batches, I mean, you could do a year's worth of soup in one day. Yeah, like this pot is filled up to here. Yep. So clearly, we can go get 20 pounds of beef. Boom. Soup for a year. Kapow. Well, peas are done long ahead of schedule. They're breaking down pretty nicely, but I still might take, I might take the immersion blender to there and probably add a little bit of liquid because that's really dang thick. Are you gonna head out and do errands? Yep, lots of stuff to do in just, town. Just so you know that I'm squirming here as everything like starts to go off at the same time. Oh yeah, I got you well set up for chaos. Oh, I got it. Bringing that to someone who's gonna appreciate it. Yeah, hopefully they appreciate it and they said they're a sucker for anything Huckleberry. Oh man, and we got that's Huckleberry how you get on her good side. Oh yeah. Guys, we're almost ready to go. The last of the soup is just finishing up. For those of you that have been following us for a while know that we've been working on kind of upsizing our canning setup. Again, to get away from these really small batches and make it so that we could can many things at once. So we invested in this 41 and a half quart pressure canner. This can hold 19 quart jars, double stacked or 32 pint jars. So you can see if these three batches are gonna give us 19 jars, there's plenty of room for more. I can already tell you I'm regretting not making these batches larger. Is this size canner good for the average home? I don't know. I guess it depends how much you can. But I know as soon as we start getting into hunting and we bring an animal home, canning, say, a bunch of deer meat is gonna be no problem at all with this guy. Really excited to take her for a test drive. This is actually the first time that we're pressure canning in this baby. Most soups and most vegetables are gonna need to be pressure canned. So for us, if we're wanting to get away from fruit and jam, then we're gonna have to embrace pressure canning and try to find a way to work it into our lifestyle, even though it takes a lot longer. Water bath canning, most things you only need to can for about 20 minutes, depending on your elevation and the size. Pressure canning, on the other hand, these babies gotta be cooked at pressure for an hour and 20 minutes. That does not include the time it takes to get it up to pressure. 
and it doesn't count the time when it's done canning to come back down to pressure before you could take the lid off. So I think to keep these jars hot, what we're gonna do is transfer them to this pot here. Cause I don't think we want this much water in the canner. And I can tell you from experience, you don't wanna be putting hot liquid in a cold jar or a cold jar into a hot water bath canner. When you're working with really large batches like these, that tends to happen if you pull all the jars out and put these three batches of soup away. I just tried the leftover split pea soup, guys. Really good. I think we have a winner. Polished off the split pea soup. There was just a few bites. Took a couple sample bites of the chicken soup and it's cold, so I'm probably gonna toss that in our leftover soup stash for dinner. And then I had myself a nice lunch of leftover chili and that was pretty good too. Something to note before I decided to do these three recipes together, I did check the pressure canning specifications to make sure that they needed to be canned at the same pressure and for the same length of time. And the answer is yes. Go time, baby. You, you, my friend, are responsible for making people think their pressure canner is going to explode in their face. Here is our canning pantry, and this is, for the most part, two years of canning. Of course, we've eaten a lot. Our first year canning, literally all we did was jams. And last year was a leg up because we canned a lot of stuff from the garden. So here's all of our tomatillo salsa. And then we canned 70 pints of salsa verde. I'd say the only complete food we have that's just ready to eat straight out of the jar are these dilly garlic scapes. Really amazing, but even, even this, it's not really something you're gonna grab when you're hungry. It's more something that you're gonna grab when you want a snack. Eight minutes to go. It 
It was supposed to be pretty nasty this week, but it's actually been pretty dang nice. And the snow's almost all the way out of the garden, so really soon here, I'm hoping I could talk Jesse into making a couple of raised beds with me. I think gardening and canning actually have a lot in common. It's all about starting really small, so if you've never canned anything before, I think the first project I did with my mom was canning like five half pints, half pints mind you, of blueberry jam. And I think we even got the blueberries from like Trader Joe's or something, it was nothing special. But that one project allowed me to come home and build on it and then we were foraging all year and we went just canning crazy. And then a year later we decided to really up our canning game and invest in the right canning supplies, I guess. But gardening's the same way. You don't just wake up and have this huge lucrative garden on your property. It takes time and every year it's about pushing yourself, experimenting, and building on what you learned the previous year. So today, we're just kind of having fun, canning a big batch of soup, but very soon here, this garden is gonna be crawling in fresh organic produce, and we're gonna wanna have the skills to put her away efficiently. Oh yeah. We can't just go taking the lid off. There's a lot of pressure built up in here. So what we need to do is wait for the pressure to come back to zero, and then we can take the lid off. And then we have to let it sit and cool down for a little bit, and then we can take a look at our canned goods. Oh yeah. Woo. Still cooking away. Hey. Hey. You survived the soup. Yeah, I haven't checked it yet. I've been oh. waiting. It's been really hard for me. I'm ready to check it. Really? I feel bad for abandoning you, but it's okay. Our day changed all of a sudden, so. Yep, funny how things work out. Get used to it. The only thing constant <laughs> around here is change. Oh yeah. There's really no water in there. It's like no. a couple inches of water. So exciting, guys, so exciting. Uh -huh. That looks really good. It's pretty good, I had it for lunch. Oh, you had some. Should we be taking these off as we go? It's fine, we need to check the seals on them. Oh, that yeah. I haven't checked yet. So how long did this can for? Or an hour? Uh, hour 20. Hour 15. One, two, three. I thought you six, said we were making like four eight pints of chili. Something. Chili was the largest one. And uh, I think that did more than the recipe said it was going to make. And everything else made less. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. Let me see that, baby. Ooh, that's split pea for sure. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Definitely thick. I added yes. a lot of water. That's very thick. Super thick. But no one wants watery split pea soup. Ooh, chicken. chicken soup. Yeah, buddy. What do you think? Do you think like if you're hungry for lunch one day or working, you'd be tempted to grab some soup and heat it up? Yeah, this is gonna be awesome after a long day of work to just pop one or two of these open. How many more do we got? Uh, four to go. So chicken, 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 chicken. That's quite a bit of chicken. Yeah, here, let me reorganize. That's quite a bit. It didn't feel like that much when I was doing it. So nine pints of chili. You said there's four. I think there's four split peas. Split peas. Not that it's relevant, but a pint of soup. How big are soup cans? Ten ounces? I don't know. Let's They're check. not sixteen. Fourteen ounces. Fourteen ounces. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how much we pay for organic soup. It's probably close to three bucks. I mean, it's not. It's not going to be a dollar, and it's not a dollar fifty. No, that's a good question. And what's really frustrating is when you buy a can of soup like that and you pour it out. There's like two pieces of chicken, exactly. one piece of carrot, one piece of celery, and a, and bunch, then a of bunch of broth. There's twenty pints here. Let's do. Let's do two dollars. Let's say we got we got it on sale. Ooh, that's so still like there's, sixty bucks in, in canned food. 
Yeah, there's 60 bucks here, but I, I think it's more than that. And I think you've proven that if you do this in bigger batches, the amount of effort's really nominal to do more. So for a test run, I'd say we're hot on the heels of Campbell's soup. Pressure canning really like wasn't as big of a deal. It never is, it's pretty easy. Yep. But then I also feel what was kind of time consuming was doing three batches at once, like three different yep. recipes. Three different recipes. I feel like yep. you're better off tripling a recipe. Yep. So make all your chili in one day, make all your chicken soup in another day. Right. Otherwise you're just too scattered and you, you know, your brain's in too many places at once. So if someone's wanting to do this, I feel, yes, take one recipe and triple it or something. I guess it depends on your canning capacity. <laughs> That's a big question right there. <laughs> this is satisfying. Yeah. I consider this experiment a success. I feel like you did a good job and I'm totally excited to have canned soup on hand. I think we're gonna get excited about the pressure canner. We don't mm -hmm. know if we're gonna get to hunt this year, but if we do, it'd be nice to can some meat. Yep. And if we get to go fishing and stuff like that, so. Fish. There's so many options, or yep. part of it goes back to the, if there's just a really good sale at the grocery store on some type of meat, you can get it, right? We're yep. all limited on freezer space. Just yep. because we have power, doesn't mean we're wanting to get 10 freezers. We have our deep freezer, which is right. on the smaller side, and then we have this freezer. And in all honesty, those are gonna be full most of the time, yep. especially because when we're foraging, we're gonna wanna save a lot of that fruit for when we do have time to can it, or maybe we're gonna wanna save it for meat in winter time. So we can't be having soup in our freezer space or nope. a lot of other foods. So great tool to have in your toolkit.